praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Today is a good day to be in worship. On last Sunday, we were, we were in worship and we did a little old school devotion. And would it be okay if we stay old school just for one more Sunday and come home? We're going to do some of the simple songs that I grew up on and say something like this. Won't it be great?
Jesus, God. Bless each and every person that's here right now, God. And one of these old days, when it's your time to call and our time to answer, give us a home somewhere in your kingdom that we might breathe out our life eternally unto you. In the almighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
raising our worship on the keyboard, the organ, and the guitar, and the drums on today. We'll celebrate, and then we'll celebrate God for our cancer survivors. Is that all right? Oh, y'all, come on, let's give our cancer survivors. Psalms 150, it says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellence and greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and the harp, praise him with the temple and dance, praise him with the string instruments and organs, Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Guess this is the part I love the most. Let everything that have breath, y'all know it, praise ye the Lord. You may be seeking the presence of God. Another selection.
You keep it planted right where it is underground so that it can grow. Can I preach today? Yeah. After you plant the seed in good soil, you water it, you give it sunlight, and you nurture it until it starts to grow. Notice that I said good soil. You can't just plant anywhere and expect it to grow. Y'all need to talk to me. And so the seed eventually starts to grow out of the ground and gets more uh, nutrient. At some point, the seed will grow into the plant that is meant to be and it will flourish. You see, whatever and whatever you plant out there, good or bad, it'll come back to you. It may not come back in the same way, but it will come back. And I don't know about you, but I want my deeds to be good because I want to reap good things. Anybody want to reap good things? I want things to go well with my children, my children's children, my children's children's children, and generations to come. Get planted in God's house so that you can learn what his good and perfect will is for your life. There, there are some roads you don't have to travel down. Choose the path that leads to an abundant life in God. I'm not here today to give you a planting course, but I've come to tell you today that if you plant yourself in the house of the Lord, you will flourish in God's court. You will flourish like a tree, a palm tree, according to the scripture. Do you see how the palm tree just sways back and forth and withstands anything? That's why it is always associated with vacation. It looks, it doesn't have, like it doesn't have a care in the world. If you know anything about palm trees, you know that they are durable and they will stand just about all kinds of weather. In the most intense weather, even in a hurricane, palm trees gracefully stand that ground. Y'all know what I'm talking about? If you plant yourself in the house of God, nothing will be able to uproot you because you have grounded yourself in God and his house. Amen. Your hell can't uproot you. Your finances can't uproot you. Your man or your woman, or for today's time, your baby daddy and them can't uproot you. Y'all ain't gonna talk about you. No depression can uproot you. No job can uproot you. No coronavirus can uproot you. No relationship can uproot you. No devil in hell. And guess what? No devil on earth can uproot you from out of God's house. Is anybody planted like the palm tree in the house of the Lord today? Where, where are the people that are planted and unmovable? You don't care who come or who go. You are in God's house to stay. Just like in Psalms, the 16th chapter, verse 8, you shall not be moved because God is your rock. He is your salvation. He is your strength. He is your defense. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Do you know that God, that God desires for us to flourish as the children of God? I tell them to meet themselves on the, the call. They preach a lot of me. The word flourish is defined as growing or developing in a healthy or vigorous way, especially as a result of being in a favorable environment. Flourish means to grow, thrive, prosper, to, to do well, to increase, to multiply. Based on this meeting, I think I can speak for all of us and say that we all want to flourish as God's children. If you, if you have any kids in your lives, I'm sure you can agree that you want to see them flourish. 
You want to see them grow up and do well. You want what's best for them. You want what's best for them in life. Like God wants what is best for us. Do you know that when we are flourishing in God, we are blossoming and bringing forth godly fruit in our lives. We bring, we bring forth love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in our lives. Listen, when, when you start to exercise these spiritual fruit in your life, you will flourish like never before. These spiritual fruit are really the key to your success in life and in God. When you are growing in God, you should start to display the fruits of the Spirit just by observing people. You, you can see whether they are growing in God or if they are even children of God. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Many times when you run into people, you can tell right away whether they are Christ-like or they're just acting like, oh, y'all need to talk to me. And then there are some people who will adopt uh, the Steve Harvey phrase and say, y'all know church folks say this in the men, don't trip God and through with me. Y'all yeah, need to talk back to me. Yeah. When, when someone catches you, what you ain't supposed to be, Kurt, when, when you say things out of your mouth that you know you want to say, the first thing you say is, don't, don't trip God in. I still to pull out my, y'all need to talk to me. If you are one of these people, I hope you're planted in the house of the Lord so that you are getting all of the nourishment you need to turn into the person God has destined you to be. Can I preach today? I'm almost out of here. I'm almost out. It's in the house of the Lord where you learn who you are in God. God has a special plan for all of our lives. And the only way you will get to know this plan is by planting yourself in his house. Otherwise, you will never know what God has planned for you to do in his kingdom. And you can't be used by God. And some people only come when they need a quick fix. And I want to talk to you. To get something, there, to get rid of something they're going through. Y'all want to preach to me. And I'm in the sense back. I'm with you. I'm with you. Some of us only come when our money is funny and right. our change is strange and we just lost our job and now you want to come to the church. Y'all want to talk to me. And you start to repeat the same pattern of visiting different churches here and there because then I think you're not grounded. And God, stop church hopping. And get somewhere where you can be used not by the pastor, but you can be used by God. Amen. Stop, stop, stop church hopping. Come on. This pandemic has caused us to be church hoppers even virtually. Um, they ain't not yet. Let me, let me click up a little bit. Oh, the choir ain't singing. Let me see what Jake's been doing over there. Oh, 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 oh Jake's ain't not yet. Let me, let me, let me go see what Creflo doing. We become nasty church hoppers virtually. We don't even have to spend gas money now. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. But you gotta show God that you are faithful to Him. And that you are concerned about his kingdom work here on earth. Now listen, I've come to find out, I've been to church all my life, and I've come to find out that there is no perfect church. And the reason why it's no perfect church is because you are not perfect. You're trying to find the perfect church. You're trying to find the pastor that fits your quota, the choir that sings the type of song you like, the Sunday school teacher that teaches the way you want to hear. But there's no perfect church because they're teaching somebody like you that's not perfect. 
take a secret. The pastor is not perfect. The deacons are not perfect. The ushers are not. The choir members are not perfect. When you become perfect, the Lord will catch you up and take you to be with Him. Because the Bible says, none of the righteous shall see God. Am I preaching? I'm just trying to change your mindset. This church is still standing from over 126 years because somebody was planted in the house of God. Someone stayed faithful and helped the church grow. When they graduated from college, they got a good job and they came back to the church. Y'all need to talk about it today. Now I have a lot of graduates from college. They know when they graduate, they don't go to nobody church. It's because we have not told our kids when God bless you with that education, just come back and give it Amen. to somebody, church. Amen. It ain't all about Macedonia, but give it to God. Amen. This church is here because somebody was planted. And being planted in God's house is important for spiritual and kingdom growth. Being planted in God's house gives you the power you need to withstand anything that life brings your way. Sometimes there are Sundays where you just need a word to help you run on just a little while longer to see. Anybody know what I'm about? See what the enemy is. Yeah. The word of God brings life. Satan will do whatever he or she can to keep you out of the house of God. He doesn't want you to flourish. He don't want you to grow spiritually. So he will throw everything at you to frustrate your purpose. If you're not planted in God, you won't be able to stand against the tricks of the devil and you will lead a defeated life. You'll live a defeated life without experiencing the full abundance of life that God wants you to have. Am I making sense? Yes. The scripture says those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of God. This tells us that it is God's will for us to be in his house. Yes. Throughout the Bible, you will see where God always has a house built for him so that he could dwell there. When we are gathered together God's, in God's presence, he's with us and his spirit is here interceding for us. We can come to church and get our breakthrough because guess what? God is here. Listen, most miracles take place in the house of God where we are assembled together. The Lord says in Matthew the 18th chapter, the 22nd verse, where two or three are gathered together in my name, not Bailey's name, but in God's name, I'll be. Oh, y'all know the scripture. When God is in the midst, you can rest assured that he is visiting all of our situations. The book of Romans, the 8th chapter, the 26th verse says, For we do not know what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. Let me bring it, let me bring it down a little bit. God is working things out for us by his Spirit. Do you believe that today? God needs your talents, he needs your resources to help build his kingdom. You got to get connected. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up, neighbor. Get connected. I saw somebody going like this. <laughs> I'm, I'm being funny. They weren't going like this. They were really going like this. First Corinthians 
15, chapter 58, verse 6. Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God is going to reward you for your faithfulness and commitment. If you want to flourish, get granted in God's house. Maybe things aren't turning around for you because you haven't committed yourself to God and you haven't planted yourself in His house. God gave us the church for us to grow and to build His kingdom. We all have a responsibility to build God's kingdom. The book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 11th verse says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. God gave us these different gifts for the good of his church. If we plant ourselves in God and in God's house, we will see these gifts start to come forth and benefit the body of Christ. First Peter 4, chapter 10, verse says, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as God, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Everyone has something to offer in the church. So many people in the church today don't get involved in doing things in the church. They just lay in the soil and never bloom into what God wants them to be. They scatter by the wayside and take no root. Use the talents God gave you. Bloom where you are planted and allow the gifts and talents to flow into the church and into the community. You are not here by accident. Look at somebody and say, you're not here by accident. God placed you here for a reason. And I know we have internet church and other ways to deal with work. But there is something about being in the house of the Lord and enjoying Christian fellowship. We know church is not a social event, but what better place to find friendship? Do you know that it is encouraging to be around the saints. It's encouraging to see your spiritual brothers and sisters in the house of the Lord. We are all in this, in this thing together. And we need each other. We need each other. Look at somebody saying, we need each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being planted means that you are laying down your life to serve God. I'm almost out of here, Ronnie. Don't get out of here in the tree. <laughs> Being planted in church means that you are tithing uh -oh, to your local Reverend, church. Reverend, Reverend, Reverend. I know y'all sold the seed in Jake's ministry, and I ain't mad at you. I do too. But you got to sow it to the local church. You got to sow it to the church where the pastor you're going to call and wake him up in the middle of the night. Y'all going to talk to him. And notice, I didn't say so to the pastor, I said so to the church. You got a soul into the church. Help the church grow. If you, if you pass by a church and say, oh, look at the wall, and you ain't help that church out, you ought to shut your mouth. <laughs> if anybody walk in Macedonia and say, oh, they need this and they need that, don't you say nothing if you ain't put nothing on the them. And I'm still talking to the dollar for too. too. He would treat the church like they had the club, throwing dollars. <laughs> Y'all went to 09, nobody go to the club. All right, all right, all right. I can have, okay, I apologize. All right. Somebody, somebody, don't tell all your business. You gotta be faithful. And you gotta be loyal to God. You got to be loyal to the church. 
I want to ask a question today as I get ready to leave. Has anybody planted in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Has anyone decided that you're going to plant yourself in the Lord's house? Yeah. No matter who comes, no matter who goes. Yeah. My brothers, I don't know about you, but I feel like David in the book of Psalms when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, I get excited when I enter into his house. It's in his house where I find joy. It's in his house where I find love. It's in his house where I find peace. It's in his house where I find the strength just to run on a little while longer. When I step into the house of God and feel his presence, I say to myself, I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. I feel like the whole country is today. Has anybody decided that they'll run on and see what the end is going to be? Yeah.
grow, you will prosper, you will thrive, you will increase, and you will multiply. God promised abundance and prosperity for those who are planted in his house. When you are planted in God's house, we grow, we mature, and develop spiritually. You will grow into the person God has destined you to be. Get planted in God's house and be faithful. You'll see the promises of God. You'll see them flourish in your life. All the building as we open the door to the church. If you haven't accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, Today will be a good day. See, see what a difference he'll make in your life. He's waiting on you. We, we're living in perilous and uncertain times. And you need to be saved. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. If you're in line, you want to be saved. You want to be a part of this church. You want to be a part of God's church.
says, like you and me, that's what I'm so good. They call that a ring. Uh, Captain, the virus, please go to the bank. Thank you. 
But uh, cancer is cancer. No matter whether it's uh, breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, cancer is cancer. It all is a disease. In 2013, I started walking uh, at my job, what they call it, uh, the 2-2 two -two breast cancer walk. At first, I didn't want to do it because I was like everybody else. I'm not putting up no tutu. Uh, a young man in Moran, Florida was standing up next to me and he asked the lady, what do I have to do? She said, all he needs is a sponsor for $25 and he get a tutu. I don't even know this man. This man took out $25, put down on the counter and told me, you gonna walk. And I've been walking since 2013. This year, this year alone, I raised twenty-seven hundred dollars for a breast cancer. I don't take all the credit. I got friends and family members that I reach out to, from the small ones to the old ones. And my goal next year is three thousand. Amen. Uh, Amen. I can get it this way for you, my boy. Uh, that's why when I say I wasn't gonna do it, they looked at me like I was crazy. Man, you're doing it for your mom. So since 2013 now, I'm not only doing it for my mom now, I'm doing it for my wife who have love cancer. So that just made me more made me want to go hard and do what I want to do. And I'd like to thank everyone that came out because you have a lot of people that have cancer and they keep it inside. It's nothing to keep inside. If you want to see anything, go to the MCI. Baptist Cancer Center. Walk around with cancer. Don't know what's going on. The first time I went with my wife to the cancer center, I seen a little baby with cancer. I broke that. So, with us, we can deal with it. But just imagine the little baby. So if you got cancer, anyone got cancer, don't hold it in, man. Let it out. Because, like Pastor said, I don't hesitate and I'm told to put on pink to, to walk for a call. I wish most men would step up to the plate and do what I do. Because right now I'm doing it for my wife and my mom. So it's not a problem for me. So I just want to say to the man, hey, step up, man. Because cancer don't kill only females. Cancer, cancer kills everybody. Babies, females, males, it doesn't matter. Prostate cancer to us is like breast cancer to Jim. Yeah. So, hey, let's step up, man. Take care of yourself. Go get checked. Don't wait till the last minute. Because once you wait till the last minute, you gone. So just do me a favor, man. Just, I'm speaking to the men. Hey, just step up, man. You know, don't let nobody tell you. You this and you that because you wear a pink or you wear a tutu. You doing it for a cause. This is my cause right here on my chest and right here. This is my cause. Come on, let's celebrate again all of our friends. I'd like to rec recognize someone. Uh, she's a sister in law. My wife don't know anything about this. She drove all the way down from Orlando to be here. Beautiful. All right, come on, Lily. My wife is. She's not going to she didn't know anything about she was coming. When I spoke with my sister law she was in Indianapolis. She told me she would fly back to Florida if she won't miss it. And she still did. Hey, so again, we thank everyone.
We thank everyone all of our visitors. We thank God bless you so much. We're glad to see you. Please don't make this your last time. I know Lydia has some co-workers here. Do you want to recognize them? My, my previous PTA, him and her All right, man. We're trying to hurry up and get Lydia back to the work as soon as you can. Yes, Lord. The aid of the Holy Spirit. But we thank you. So we have Kate downstairs. We, okay, we have we have Kate for, for everyone for in honor of all of our cancer survivors and the ones who have gone on to be with, with God. Come on, let's give God a great name for us. As we, as we pray, so we can be this message. Let's light our candles and honor the ones who's gone and the ones who have survived. Y'all can have a seat real quick, so I'll go light. I know you're a dog fan, man. How you doing? Don't disrespect your ass.
everybody knows me by folk, Franklin and Sammy from stomach cancer, and my uncle Mike from lung cancer. And I'm also a survivor of two years. <laughs> I'm representing my sister in law, Melvin Rose Scipio, Lawrence's mother, who died in uh, June of 2008. Also, I am representing a former ch children of the Lord of Macedonia in the Sunday Baptist Church and the Sunday School Assistant Superintendent and Baker. And I'm also representing Boston. I was diagnosed with lymphoma on November 2003, expected to die within three years. And today is 20. 20. <laughs> Example 
that you still live, you're still alive. You still live here. You still sit on the throne. So we thank you, God. We praise you. We honor you. God, we ask you to come everyone who's present in this place today. God, guide us, keep us, and protect us, God. God, bless all of our youth that may be going through sickness and illness, God. God, keep their mind in perfect peace. We thank you. We thank you for your healing. God, we thank you. We love you. We give you praise and we give you honor. We give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before his presence with that seed and joy, and now and forevermore. And God bless the food that we will receive. Let it be worship to our bodies. God bless the hands you have prepared. And God bless the hands you purchased it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, truly, Miss Thompson, you hear? Come on up and do what you do. That's my phone. I'll cheat my balls. You need a fire. My balls. Need a firm, man, because he's coming to the doctors just keep up the call of me. This is the trace. We'll be all right. We're going to walk out as soon as you finish that. They can walk out while they're sick. All these singers here, um, they told me I'm free, but since we've already been on free, take me to GU on my strength. Because that's what I was thinking about when I thought about all these survivors, that God is y'all strength. Amen. G. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other.
Jesus.